Welcome to Everything Co-op, bringing you information on how cooperatives can help improve your quality of life. This show is being sponsored by the National Co-op Bank, NCB. The NCB is dedicated to strengthening communities nationwide for the delivery of banking and financial services for the nation's cooperatives, their members, and other socially responsible organizations. For more information on the power of community ownership, visit ncb.coop. That's ncb.coop. Now stay tuned for your host, Vernon Oaks. Welcome to Everything Cooperative this morning. It's a wonderful, wonderful morning. And you know, this is a great day to be outside. Matter of fact, every day and any day is a great day to be outside. Growing up in Bluefield, West Virginia, we used to roam out in the woods growing up, chase everything, butterflies and run after tires and climb trees and tear them down. And this morning, we have the outdoor person online. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great, great, great. And you are the store manager for am, REI or what's your title? I, I am the I am the general manager for the uh, REI Co-op Washington, D.C. flagship store. Flagship store. What makes a flagship yeah. store? <laughs> uh, a flagship store makes uh, something that's really a physical representation of REI. So a an awesome store with incredible products, uh, incredible service, um, different brands that we don't carry elsewhere, and lots of really great experiences for our customers uh, and events that we hold in our store as well. So how did you all decide to come to D.C.? How did we decide to come to D.C.? Well, you know, we've been in the region um, really since the mid-'80s. I uh, was when we opened in College Park and in Bailey's Crossroads. So we've been in the area for quite a while, just never in the district. So, you know, the, the timing was right, the, the building was correct, the neighborhood was awesome, and so we decided to open uh, here in the heart of the district. And, frankly, if you're going to go into the nation's capital, you have to go in uh, with something incredible. And so we opened with our fifth flagship store uh, back in October of 2016. You know, I've known about you guys for quite some time now, maybe, well, for me, three years perhaps. But I didn't even know you were at Bailey's uh, Crossroads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've been in Bailey since the 80s. Mm. Yeah. So what is REI? What is REI? So REI stands for Recreational Equipment Incorporated. We are a member-owned co-op, serving our members since 1938. And we sell just uh, a variety of outdoor gear, experiences, and events. And uh, like I said, we're, we're member-owned, so we give back to our members every year. They get a dividend check for 10% of whatever they spent that year in full-price products. They also get, um, you know, just an incredible member uh, benefits in terms of coupons, access to sales, special services. Uh, so it's really just a, a, an incredible co-op to be part of. We're one of the, the largest. Uh, we have over 12 million active me- or over 12 million members um, worldwide, actually. So. Wait, 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 wait. You have 12 million members. Yep. Wait, yep. 12 worldwide. million. That's nine zeros. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's pretty. It's pretty impressive. I joined the co-op uh, 17 years ago, and my numbers in the five millions. And uh, now, when I sell you know, new memberships to customers, their numbers are a lot higher than mine. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's six zeros. Twelve and six zeros. Twelve yeah. million members. Wow, around the world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Nineteen. Yeah, all over. Nineteen thirty-eight. 1938, yeah. So REI was founded uh, in 1938 um, by a couple, Mary and Lloyd Anderson. Um, They were a a group of ice climbers. Uh, They had 23 friends. Um, And at the time, you could not get good quality gear uh, in the States. You had to get it from Europe. And by the time it got to you, it was costing, you know, $20 for an ice axe, which at the time uh, was extremely expensive for that. So Lloyd got together with some of his friends, and they started importing ice climbing axes uh, from Europe so that they would get them at a reasonable price. And if, I think the price that they originally paid was $3.50. And so they realized just the, the collective power that they could they could have as a group. Lloyd didn't want to make money off of his friends, so they started as a co-op. Stayed that way ever since in order to get the right, the right product to the right people uh, at, the, at the fair price. Right product at the 
for the right people at the fair price. Mm-hmm. So I've had it that co-ops can normally give as good a quality, if not a better quality product at a lower price, uh, at least a competitive price. Correct, yep. Okay. Okay, now who were the, who were the founders? You said Mary and somebody. Mary and Lloyd Anderson were our founders um, out of Seattle, Washington. Um, they actually met at the University of Washington. So uh, every year in Seattle, Mary Anderson was actually with us until this past spring she passed away. Seattle actually has Mary Anderson Day. Uh, on December 7th every year. That's her birthday. Hmm. That's amazing how co-ops get started. It's that, okay, two people need products. So yep. there's a community, there's a need. And then you said 23 friends at ICECOM, and they decide, okay, I can't, I can't get my products. Only way I can get my products from Europe, and by the time I buy it and ship it over here, probably at the time it came by boat. Mm-hmm. They didn't have airplanes back then. <laughs> couldn't get on the internet and order it. Okay. True, <laughs> okay. true. So, so they <laughs> do a pigeon to send over the order. <laughs> exactly. Or a telegraph or something. Not as not, not necessarily as efficient. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And four months later, they get their axe. <laughs> Sometime later, they get their axe. But it costs them exactly. significantly more money. So it's okay. So yeah. when they formed, they bought. They just bought in quantity, correct, which lowered the price. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Okay. And so then they created a co-op. weren't interested in profit motive, just good quality service. Good quality, good quality gear, um, and you know, part of it was then sharing any profits they made back with those those members of the co-op. Um, so they were able to to do that through that model. And that's the way that we've stayed ever since. We, um, they're kind of the first quote unquote store. They operated out of their homes for a very long while. And I believe it was 1954, we had the first quasi store. We had a closet above the Green Apple uh, Pie restaurant in Capitol Hill. And then uh, what do you mean finally. Capitol, Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. Oh, sorry. Born Washington, D.C. Capitol yeah. Hill, Seattle is a neighborhood in Seattle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not, not here, not in the district. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Many years later did we get there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you're in Seattle. So, they're in Seattle, Washington, which is mm-hmm. truly outdoors, outdoorsy yep. people. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely a you know a, a mecca of outdoor uh, world for sure. Yeah. So, so they opened they a there. store above another store. They created above a, store. a green apple the green apple pie restaurant in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle, Washington. I'm curious on what's a green apple pie, but okay. Story. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's still there because we've moved the store. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we moved. So in, um, let's see. So we had that store. And then in 1975, we opened our second location in Berkeley, California. Um, that one is still there. And then, you know, expanded and grew throughout the 80s. And then, you know, talking about flagships there. In 1996 is when we opened the Seattle flagship store. So uh, Seattle Flagship is down in the South Lake Union neighborhood of Seattle. And we opened that in 1996, which is the same year that we launched REI.com. And then, same year uh, you that, launched what? Uh, REI.com was launched in 1996. REI.com. So that's your web page. That's our web page, yes, sir. And then that's, you can order on the web page at REI.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does it take to be a a part, a member of this 12 million members? How do you, how do you become a member? It's very easy. Um, you come into any of our stores or you uh, get online. It's a $20 lifetime membership fee for members. Um, and then with that membership fee, they get 10% back, like I said, every year and anything that they buy full price. They also um, you know, are, are able to vote for the board of directors, which is obviously a big deal with a co-op. They get uh, members-only coupons. We typically do the 20% off one full-price item, you know, typically once a quarter. They get to come to our members-only garage sales, which is where we sell uh, our used gear um, back to our members at a significantly reduced rate. Uh, they also get discounts on REI adventure trips, REI outdoor school classes, bike shops, ski shops. Uh, all those things have discounted rates for our members as well. So uh, definitely a, a really awesome, really awesome deal for all the benefits that you get for being a member. 
Becky, I got uh, to be a member. It costs twenty dollars. Just Correct. go in the store. So it's a very low buy-in. Yep, you, very low buy-in. You get to vote. For Come on in, talk to anybody in the Green Vest. Our inspired guides uh, are in the store and ready to take care of you. So where's your store? The address? Uh, my st- yeah, my store, the flagship store, the DC flagship, is uh, at two zero one M Street Northeast. So in the Noma neighborhood, just north of Union Station. And twenty uh, M. Is that M in North Capitol? It is uh, almost. It's M in First, just off of M in North Cap. Okay. Okay. So $20 to buy in. You get to vote for the board. You get coupons. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a member owner garage sales. Yep. And you get discount yep. on venture trips. Yep. And venture and trips, outdoor school classes. Outdoor. Okay. Outdoor school classes. Because I want to come back to that. I, I, I <laughs> what else? You, and then you get you get your personal dividend, so ten percent back of whatever full price item you spent that year. So if you buy a full price item, you get ten percent. But if it's not full price, if you got a twenty percent discount, or if you got it on a coupon, you don't get ten percent back on that. Correct. Yeah. If you buy it, the other thing. So you don't. Yeah, and the other thing that we do that I think is a fabulous benefit to our members is we actually keep track of their purchase history for them. Um, so if you, you know, we've had customers, members that come into the store and they say, you know, two years ago, I bought this really awesome, you know, camp stove. And I don't remember what it was called because I lost it, but I want to rebuy it. And we can look up on their purchase history and tell them, Hey, great. You know, two years ago, it looks like you bought a jet boil. Did you want us to take you and show you the new jet boil? Um, and we'll take them over and, you know, be able to, to get them exactly what they had bought beforehand, um, or somehow help them figure out what kind of gas goes with the item that they bought that they didn't remember, um, so it's a really great benefit that we're able to offer to them as well. So do you have items that have lifetime warranty on them or 10 years? Yeah, um, items that have uh, lifetime of the product, not your lifetime. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's what I meant. Okay. It's a little bit of a distinction, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I, I was thinking that would come in handy to keep track of it, of saying, okay, I, I yeah. bought X and it has a lifetime warranty, and you can say – you know, bring it back, and you can see it. It's messed up, and so you can look back to see when yep. you bought it and take yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And we can do that for them as well. We can we can look back and say, you know, looks like you bought that pair of hiking boots twelve years ago. It's awesome stories. If those boots could talk, let's get you in a new pair because they, real, you know, sometimes people don't realize how long they've actually had items. Um, so there there is that piece that we're able to help uh, help with our customers as well. Mm. I got a pair of cowboy boots. I- I think I bought them in 2002, but I don't remember. I know I <laughs> sold them three times. Okay. You know, I'm really, I, I came to the store and I just walked around and got totally excited. And I looked at your your board of different trips and classes. Mm-hmm. And so I want to come back and talk about that. We're going to take our first break. Let's do it. Um, but uh, you're going to help me get outdoors. Again. Sounds good. I love it. Okay. We'll be right, right back. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, WOM, at 95.9 FM. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. The program is Everything Cooperative. WOL is a great partner in that their motto is information is power. And the National Cooperative Bank is sponsoring this program so that they can give you the information and we can give you the information you need about cooperatives so you can find a cooperative and therefore you can, uh, like Becky was talking about, Becky Smith, who's a general manager of the REI store here in D.C., that coming together, groups of people can come together and 
solve whatever community problem they may have. In this case, REI, Recreation Equipment, Inc. Incorporated, yes, sir. Okay. The Mary and Lloyd Anderson came together with 23 friends and started this in 1938. Okay. So we were talking about before we took break about the benefits of membership. And I would like, I, I, I rode my motorcycle across the, uh, let's say the Shenandoah Valley. I went out and came across the Appalachian mountains Mm -hmm. and I ran across uh, some people that were, uh, they were camping and, hiking across Appalachian Trail. I said, that would yeah. be neat. And that's as far as that guy. <laughs> okay, that would be neat. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came in your store and was looking around, also I want to do some, um, you go out to Great Falls and you see people kayaking. And I said, that would be neat. That looks like fun. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if I got some classes, I could get out and either do some hiking or kayaking or other Mm -hmm. adventures outside. So can you talk to us a bit about what kind of classes you have? Oh, absolutely. So um, here in uh, the District, Maryland, and Virginia, we're we're across these three stores in the DMZ, um, we have a full outdoor school program. Um, And what that means is that we run classes in pretty much everything outdoor-related that you could think of. Um, we do um, you know, intro to backpacking classes where we take people out for an overnight. We do kayak tours of the monument. Uh, we do intro to kayaking, so we actually teach you how to paddle the boat before we take you out and explore cool sites. Uh, we do rock climbing classes out of Great Falls. Um, we have a full moon hike, I believe, coming up uh, at some point here in the next couple weeks. Um, I think it's November 5th. We have a full moon hike that goes out. Uh, we do navigation basics. We do cooking classes. And all of those are run with our outdoor school classes, Um, and those are all paid classes for our our customers. Um, It is a discounted rate for members, of course. Um, And, you know, depending on what kind of class it is, transportation is sometimes included, sometimes not. Um, Gear is sometimes included, sometimes not. Again, it just depends on which class you sign up for. Uh, At the store level, we offer um, a myriad of classes as well. Um, Most of these are free classes. Um, So we have everything from... Uh, let's see, we've got a fun one coming up next week that is Zombie Preparedness, Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse, uh, okay. which is really um, mostly about survival techniques. <laughs> Just a fun play on it since it's Halloween. Um, we do uh, basic bike maintenance classes. We have uh, intro to backpacking classes. Uh, and these are all taught by the inspired guides that work in my store. Um, so we have uh, two different sets of people that help with the outdoor school classes. Some of them are the instructors that take you out. And some of them are the the staff that work in the store that help uh, gear you up and get you prepared for those those classes and those uh, activities. So what's the relationship to um, the park department? The National the National Parks? Mm-hmm. So we have a, a really cool um, resource in the D.C. flagship, and it's called the Adventure Station. Uh, and this is a partnership that we have with the National Park Service uh, and REI. Um, and we basically have uh, free trip planning. We have all the resources. Um, we've got some mapping technologies. We've got some really great uh, apps that REI owns to help do some trip planning. But it's essentially a place that you can walk up to um, the folks that, that work at the adventure station and say, I would like to go on a backpacking trip. I want it to be uh, no more than 30 miles. I need a loop trail. Uh, I'd like to take you know, a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old with me, and I want to be no more than three hours from D.C. Where should I go? And they will help Hmm. you spell out where your trip should be, uh, help you find the maps for it, um, and then give you some checklists and everything, uh, and hand you over to the staff to make sure that you have the proper gear for the event. But it's a really, really great resource uh, that we have available to our customers at the flagship store. So what's the cooking class? (laughs) Which cooking class? (laughs) We have a lot of cooking classes. Um, We do uh, backcountry cooking classes. We do campfire basics classes. Um, I don't have one. We're working on getting one set up for December, actually, so we can uh, have some fun with a holiday-themed backcountry cooking. 
Um, I don't have, I don't think I have one on the books at the moment, but we definitely offer, you know, how to cook. So it's, um, whether it's cooking over the campfire or cooking over the backpacking stove uh, to teach you how to have, you know, more than just ramen noodles in the backcountry. Um, we have a good time trying to help folks find the proper nutrition as well as the proper taste when they're on their trips. Proper nut- nutrition and proper taste. <laughs> taste. Okay. Yeah. And I guess all of that includes safety. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, always. Hmm. I was thinking you're going to have a ketogenic diet or something or <laughs> proper nutrition. Okay. So it's how to cook outside, basically. Correct, yeah. Okay. Open up a can of pork and beans and go. Uh, maybe a little more, a little more, uh, a little more than that. <laughs> I sometimes wait to the end of the program to ask this question, but I want to ask you now, in particular, you're smiling and laughing over there. Do you like what you do? I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. I've um, I've been working for the co-op for just over eleven years. Um, and every day I get to go into work at a fabulous place, work with, uh, awesome staff members, great customers, uh, and really is a place that, um, just, you know, it, it ties into my personal integrity. I love what REI stands for. Um, I love products that we sell. I'm a huge outdoors person. Um, so it, it just, it fits my personal, uh, just what I want to do with my life. So I love my job. Absolutely. Personal integrity, mm-hmm. huge outdoor person, awesome yep. staff, great customers, fabulous store. So do you pay them to go <laughs> to work? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are definitely days where I get to say, wow, I work here. This is so cool. So, um, you know, getting, getting to uh, open and run a flagship store in the district uh, is just a, a really great experience. It's been something that um, you know I've been I've been working towards for a while, uh, and is the, the way that the community has really welcomed us to the area. The events we've been able to offer um, have just been um, just a really great testament to you know what it is that Washington D.C. wants out of their flagship, um, and the, the power of what the co-op wants to bring uh, to D.C. So I've been very very honored and very happy and thankful to be able to be in this place. So how did you? get here i mean how did you 11 years ago what did how did you become involved in the co-op did you know about co-ops before that um so i actually i joined rei as a customer um at the eugene oregon store back in 2001 um it was something i was i used to direct summer camp and i was out there and um had walked into this really cool store that i'd heard about from staff and wow this place is so awesome i get to you know talk to people about tents and they know all about backpacking and I can, I was looking to outfit myself for, uh, some, some great gear. So I learned about REI really when I was out there. Um, and then, uh, moving back across the country, um, I started working at REI in the Atlanta, in the Atlanta market, actually, uh, just as a part-time camping associate. And I worked on the sales floor, uh, and then worked my way up to management. Um, and then, uh, was managing actually at a per- the perimeter store in the Atlanta market before uh, getting the promotion to move up to Washington, D.C. as a general manager for the flagship store. So um, really cool. I always tell people, you know, I started working at REI because I was a little burned out from summer camp and just wanted to take a break uh, and thought, I, I love REI. I've been a customer for years. It's a great place. Um, I had been meeting with some of the staff there to do some programming with my summer camp job and um, fell in love with it and it's been the best year. <laughs> So you want to take a Love break years from years. summer camp and end up as a general a manager? And... Like, okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you went yes, from sir. the pot to the fire in terms of, <laughs> in terms of stress. Well, a little steps there in between, I suppose. There's a, there's a little more to the history than that, but you know that that's kind of the outline of it. Um, you know, in terms of how how I got it to that to that place. But um, I've been very involved, uh, you know, at REI since I started uh, back 11 years ago. So. So, so, um, what do you say your product is? I, I get that you sell adventure and fun. Mm-hmm. Is, what so, do you, say? In, you know, we sell a, a slew of outdoor products. You know, our REI owns its own brand, so we actually sell REI Co-op branded items. 
uh, as well as so many other brands uh, that Aria carries. So um, everyone from the outdoor industry, we sell most of the, the things that they that they sell. Um, and everything from, you know, the, the backpack and the boots that you need to carry uh, and wear to uh, the titanium spoon that you might need uh, to the bike tires, to the kayak paddles, to the ski bindings, um, anything basically that's human powered. We don't do anything that's not human powered. So we don't sell any hunting. We don't sell any fishing gear. We don't sell any um, scuba diving, that kind of thing, uh, anything with a motorized bow and arrows um, okay. type of thing. So, yeah. We're going to take our second break, and we'll come back and have some more fun with Becky Smith from REI. We'll be right back. Don't touch that down. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, WO at 95.9 FM. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. The program is Everything Cooperative. We have Becky Smith, who's the general manager of the REI flagship store here in Washington, D.C. At 20 M Street Northwest. 201. Sorry, 201 M oh, Street. Oh, 201 M Street. Okay. Yes, sir. Yep, 201. Oh, that's why I thought it was right at North Capitol. 201. Okay. <laughs> 201, yeah. So NCB, National Corp Bank's mission is to support and be an advocate for America's cooperatives and their members, especially in low-income communities, by providing innovative financial and related services. Ah, and we have REI, which I'm just excited about. And I was doing the break, uh, Becky, just sort of, um, I don't know if the word is envious of your career. <laughs> um. I got an MBA out of Stanford, and I wanted to get into the recreational uh, industry in some kind of way. And the closest I got was an interview with Disney, but this was 1976, and I got one interview, and I paid my way there, so nothing happened. But to have gotten into REI or something like this and and just play all day, <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's awesome. I, I, I love what you do. Um, so, um, I guess I want to talk more about the co-op side of it before 2001, when you walked into the, to the store, because some of your, your staff had told you about this great store in Eugene, Oregon, did you know anything about cooperatives? Um, I knew a little bit, uh, and I have to say I knew a little, very little bit. I actually did my undergraduate work at Indiana university, uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, and we had, um, Quite a few student cooperative houses, um, housing areas that we had, uh, as well as a, a, a co-op, a food, a food store co-op. I, I don't even remember the name of it at this point. Um, that was in town, so I knew. Uh, literally, I would say that I was familiar with the term, but I didn't really know much about um, any of the principles to co-op um, or anything, you know, historically about them at all. So I was, I was really unfamiliar uh, for the most part with co-ops. Um. I worked at Cummings Engine Company in Columbus, Indiana. We used to go to Bloomington to dance because there was <laughs> nothing in Columbus. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but I did not know about co-ops back then. I didn't learn anything in my formal education. Uh, and later I found out at Stanford they have some student housing co-ops, but it was not taught in the uh, business program. Um, <laughs> so I picked it up and I started managing housing co-ops, and that's what I do here in the district. I'm a property manager. So by managing housing co-ops, I learned about co-ops and I've just falling in love with the principles. And that's what I want to talk about now. Um, the values of co-ops are self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. And in tradition of the founders, cooperative members believe in the ethical values of honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for one another or caring for others. <laughs> Does REI live up to those values? Uh, absolutely, we do. Um, you know, our the, the mission of REI, and this is uh, anywhere, I think it's on our website as well, is to um, inspire, educate, and outfit for a lifetime of outdoor adventure and stewardship. Can you uh, say so that, little, of, can you that one more time, a little bit slower for me? Yep, to inspire, educate, and outfit for a lifetime of outdoor adventure and stewardship. 
outdoor adventure and stewardship. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. How do you do that? Inspire, educate, and outfit. One of the best ways, and you've heard me say this phrase, uh, the inspired guys, the staff that work at my store, um, that's their job. Their job is to be inspired guides uh, to our customers. So when our customers come in the door, um, you know, sometimes they're looking for something specific. Sometimes they're just wandering around, um, and they're really just looking for inspiration. So the staff that work at my store uh, we call them inspired guides, which is a, um, a phrase that some REIs use for their staff. Um, and the staff at the DC flagship really take that to heart. They take that to mean that it's, you know, it is their job to inspire customers to get outside, get them excited about the next thing that they're getting to do, um, and really to help them find the best products for, you know, whatever the adventure is that they want to, that they're looking forward to doing. You got a friend in the background? I do got friends in the background. I'm not sure. Maybe the male person's here. <laughs> okay. okay. Inspire, educate, and outfit. That's where I got sort of a, a outdoor adventure and fun. Yeah, to inspire, educate, and outfit. Yeah. Okay. So the I want to come back to that stewardship. But the principles are volunteer and open membership. Do you have any anything in your bylaws or your rules that says this type of person cannot belong, become a member? Absolutely not. <laughs> I knew that was going to be Absolutely the answer. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so but in co-ops, it just open and voluntary organizations open to all persons Correct. able to use the services and willing to accept the responsibilities of membership. Without regard to gender, social, racial, political, or religious discrimination, so then yep. you don't care which side of the aisle they're on, liberal, Not at conservative, all. or or when we uh, when we opened the Washington DC flagship, we actually ran uh, a series of programs 100 days before the store opened um, that was under the, the the wording of United Outside, and the whole premise behind it was left side, right side, United Outside. Um, so we, we would always say whenever you're outside, you know, typically you would say that you're a Democratic biker or a Republican mountain biker, you just talk about the activity. We are absolutely open to everyone. All right. I'm getting a little uh, static on your phone or something. I don't know what it is, but um, I don't know if you're moving around. Hello, Becky? Yes, I'm here. Yep, I'm still here. Okay. Good. So it's also democratic member control is the second principle of cooperatives. Mm -hmm. uh, normally it is one member, one vote. Correct. And the, the big responsibility, or one of the huge responsibilities of membership is voting for the board of directors because the board of directors are the one that that directs the organization. They have the fiscal responsibility. So out of your 12, mem 12 million members, do you have any sense of how many of them vote for elections? You know, I wish I did, but I honestly don't have that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that number here in front of me, unfortunately. But I do know that, you know, each, each membership gets uh, the option to vote for the board of directors. And so each member. Whether they choose to exercise that right or not, that's up to them. Okay. So each member gets one vote? Mm hmm Correct. Okay. And it doesn't make any difference how much money they have or how much they Not at all. or anything like Not that? Not at all. If you paid your 20 bucks and you're a member, you get to vote. Correct. Do you all promote the cooperative that you are co-op? I know it's on your sign when it, by the store it says REI Cooperative, which is, I was pleased to see. Mm -hmm. But in your when you send out pieces to and I'm going to join by the way thank you oh good <laughs> come on down to the DC flagship and join <laughs> yeah. yeah and um, but did, when you send out your I don't know invoices or your your um, email do you do you talk about the values of co-ops or do you sell sell the idea of cooperation 
You know, we really do. Um, it, I'm glad that you noticed our, our logo. You know, it says REI Co-op on the side of the building. Um, we have a little plaque that details just a quick history of the co-op. Uh, when you walk into my store, one of the things that you see uh, painted on the floor in front of you is welcome to the co-op. Um, and that's something that our staff, our greeters always say to you when you walk in the door of the store is welcome to your co-op. What can we help you find? Um, and so we definitely use the language of co-op. Um, one of the things that we started uh, this past uh, year or two um, was a co-op journal. So we tell member stories, uh, things about you know people that are members of the co-op that are doing just really remarkable uh, activities or um, you know, service uh, to their communities. And we've been telling those stories um, to you know the, the public really through uh, this online journal uh, called the REI Co-op Journal. So uh, we definitely talk about it uh, quite often, and we talk about how great it is. We have some signs in my store right now uh, detailing, you know, last year alone, we gave 70% of our profits back to our members, our employees, and the communities that we play in. Um, oh, 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 just oh, oh. 70%? 70%. Of your profit mm -hmm. you gave to what groups now? To our members, to our employees, and to uh, the public places that we play in. To the outdoors. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. That's what I didn't hear. Public places that you play in. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So I, I want to go back to um, – we were we, – So it's Democratic member control. Now, the third one is member economic participation. And I heard you say that people to be a member, it costs $20, so that's what you have to put in to be a member. And then you get a percent back, 10% back of anything you purchased um, for price. Correct. Okay. Who decides... The, that ten percent, or who decides how much the members get back, how much the employees get back, and how much goes to these public places that you play in? Uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, honestly, we're not, I'm not 100 percent positive on that one, so I, I don't feel like I should answer that question. Okay. Um, a lot of co-ops will have it that the members decide in some kind of a way. And um, with 12 million, that may be difficult Yeah, members. So it may be the board that makes that decision. That would be my assumption as well, but I, that would just be speculating at that point. So I wouldn't want to do that. And the members then quasi decide because they elect the board. They elected the board. Correct. Okay. Um, but I like the, this number three, because in housing co-ops and worker-owned co-ops, this is ways that people really can increase their financial wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. In your consumer cooperatives, which can, it, REI is consumer, that's the consumers own it. Uh, housing co-op is a consumer. Credit union is a consumer co-op. Um, there's a a clinic in Madison, Wisconsin that's owned by the patients. And so it's a patient-centric clinic. They make the policies and the rules of that clinic. Number four is autonomy and independence. In a co-op, they have to be able to control it, that the members control the business. Um, do you have a sense of whether that works in REI? You know, I have a sense of, the, of that that works because we are member owned. So at the end of the day, our, you know, our members, we thank them for believing in us all the, for all these years. Um, and, you know, because they get to vote for the board of directors, they do get their voice heard. Um, and, you know, because we, we do things like have member uh, member only sales and events and whatnot, um, that it, it, it does feel like we listen to them. Um, we have something that we call uh, cooperative design and our, our design teams. Um, actually go out and, and go hiking and go camping with our members in order to work with them in terms of what types of uh, products they would want to see um, and what are some, you know, we're always asking for the feedback from mm -hmm. those folks. So, uh, yes, I would say we definitely, 
we definitely look for our members to have the input into what the co-op uh, is about. Becky, we have our last um, break coming up. I told you it goes by quick. <laughs> and I want to talk about the fifth, sixth, and seventh principle. And then I would like to go into some of these co-op journals, some of these testimonies sure. that you were talking about. Okay. So we'll be right back. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, WOL, and 95.9 FM. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks at Everything Cooperative. I'm having a great, great conversation with Becky Smith, the general manager of REI, the fifth flagship store. So we were talking, we talked about the first four principles before we took break. Now, the fifth one is my favorite, and that's education, training, and information. And I think it's because my mother was a school teacher and I taught for 12 years. So I'm always interested in getting knowledge and passing along knowledge. So how does REI, you've already talked about the classes that you have for your members. Mm -hmm. But what kind of classes did they have for you as you went from a salesman to management to general manager? What kind of training do they have for your for the employees? Um, you know, we do continued training with our with our staff all the time to make sure that they are, um, you know, feeling great about uh, products and, and whatnot that is, that are coming into the store. Um, and we do the same thing with managers, make sure that everybody is um, up to speed on any you know different policies and whatnot, and make sure that we are staying uh, clear on HR. But we do, we do a lot of internal training uh, with our managers. Did you have training in your formal education to be a general manager of a flagship store? You know, um, so I have my undergraduate degree from Indiana University. Uh, actually, my degree, ironically, yes, in a way. My degree is in outdoor recreation and resource management with a minor in business. Okay. And then I actually have a, a master's in education from the University of Georgia um, with the emphasis in uh, recreational education, risk management, and the outdoors. So a few of those things really did you know, play into uh, not only just running an REI store, but uh, preparing myself to be a flagship GM. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of work when I was in the Atlanta market in terms of, uh, you know, making sure that I was connected to the community, um, that I was ready for public affairs questions and calls and comments, um, and, and really just helped with, um, you know, different events that we threw in that market as well. So really getting myself uh, prepared for this next opportunity here in the DC area and, Washington, D.C. is a town that I have always loved, always enjoyed, um, and the opportunity to come up here to the nation's capital and run this store is uh, just such a great opportunity for me. So, definitely. Fantastic. It's great. It's great. Okay. And number six is cooperation among cooperatives. What are you doing in that area working with other cooperatives that RE might be doing generally, and then what are you doing in the store in D.C.? Uh, very good question. Um I would say uh, I'm not 100% positive on some of those areas. Um, I would say that from my store, uh, we just hosted the um, uh, National Cooperation Association when they were in town in early October. Uh, we hosted them for a reception event, um, which is a lot of fun to bring uh, co-ops to the co-op, to our co-op, uh, and host them. We've got a really great, I know when you were in the store, um, you probably saw our really great outdoor courtyard space that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. uh, and we hosted those folks uh, in the store that evening for um, their reception where they were discussing, you know, the, the day's events and relaxing from it and connecting with one another. So we were able to provide that location for those folks to do that. Have you ever had any um, sales geared toward housing co-ops or credit union members or anything like that to sort of foster in the whole cooperative movement? Not, not to my knowledge. I might want to think about that. That might be cool. <laughs> I'll make a note of that one for you. Yeah. And the other one is the one you have in your mission statement. The number seven is concern for community. Absolutely. And you said that you all are the stewards of the outdoors, and I guess mm -hmm. in those areas you play in, you want to make sure that they're there for generations to come. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you do to be good stewards? So, um, you know, a lot, a lot of things that most people do, um, but some of the things that the DC flagship store has done specifically, um, last year when we onboarded our staff, we took over 80 of our new inspired guides out to Fort DuPont, 
uh, and worked alongside um, MORE, which is the Mid-Atlantic Off-Road Enthusiasts, their local um, mountain bike chapter. Uh, worked alongside them to do some trail work out there at the Fort DuPont Trails. Uh, it's one of the only places that you can legally mountain bike in the district. And so we went out there and did some uh, trail work, some trail cleanup, uh, and had a lot of fun out there with those folks. Um, my team routinely organizes their own stewardship projects here in the district. So we had um, one down at the National Mall last month. We did one out um, just north of the Georgetown area. I'm going to forget the name of the park. We did that back in August. Uh, we've worked with Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens. Um, so, you know, my team is very much uh, drawn to the stewardship part of REI's mission, and it's something that we are continually working towards um, getting our team out in the community and, and giving back to those areas. Um, in terms of REI, uh, we did just announce our 2017 local recipients for grant money. Uh, and so the, the DMD, we gave uh, over $150,000 back to local places uh, across uh, the District of Maryland and Virginia. So, again, protecting those places that we play in. I want to make sure people heard you. You just announced your 2017 grant recipients. Recipient. Correct. Okay. So this is a part of, you said that your profit is, the, you divide up profit between your members get some profit back, your staff get profits back, and then the areas that you play in? Correct. Get money. And so you, you give yeah. grants. So in 2017, do you know how much REI is given back totally? I don't know the exact total. I just know that here in this in this area, it was over $150,000 to the local DMV, um, which felt pretty pretty incredible for us to do. So in this Maryland, Virginia, D.C., there's $150,000 to help. Is this organizations or to help with the mission of being a good? Well, it's, I guess it's both. To be a good yeah, it's, it's both. It's for um, uh, for some of them are for, or for specific projects that they want to accomplish. Some of them are for um, you know helping to build up some of the infrastructure in the area. Um, we actually are helping to fund an organization called the Capital Trails Coalition, which uh, over three years we will give over two hundred fifty thousand dollars to this Capital Trails Coalition, which is helping to link up the bike trails, the bike infrastructure in the District of Maryland and Virginia and work with those entities that own the um, easements to connect those trails. So it's something else that's just a really incredible um, way for REI to give back to our local community. Three years ago, I bought a really nice bike, and I've ridden it maybe three times. So <laughs> I need your help. Come on out. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got a whole lot of great ideas here. I think we're going to have fun together playing in these different arenas. Um, so now I want to go to, and I try to go online. You said to go to rei.com slash journal? Well, if you go to rei.com, um, we actually have a spot on there across the upper upper area that's called the co-op journal. So rei.com slash blog actually takes you to the co-op journal. Okay, can you, so can you tell me some of those? Some of those journal articles? Mm -hmm. So these are these are articles that are written either by REI staff members, they're written by contributing folks, um, you know, other outdoors folks, people that write these. Uh, and they literally are anything from um, a, a really cool member story um, about somebody that's doing a really great activity or a really great event. Um, they are, you know, um, Things around uh, specific product, hiking boots versus trail runners, um, you know, getting your nature fix in. Some of them are about national parks places. Um, but it's really all about being able to connect people to people uh, and connect people back to the outdoors. So it's a really incredible uh, place to tell those cool stories. Well, are, is there any particular cool story that, that just sort of touched you that you can share? Um, let's see. One of the ones that I really like right now, uh, they just posted last, um, just earlier this week, actually, is uh, a century of Denali National Park. A century so of? Going through Denali National Park. Okay. So it's going through and talking about um, some of the history of Denali, uh, as well as some of the you know, folks that have been able to, to go through Denali. 
um, people that have worked in Denali and, and telling their story. Uh, you know, the national parks is, are such an incredible thing for um, the United States to have and be able to celebrate those. And Denali National Park being somewhere that's very, very far away. Not a lot of us are going to get up there. Um, and so being able to, to watch that and uh, see some of the pictures from that is just inspiring and really makes you want to buy a plane ticket to Alaska. So it, this is in I don't know the Denali National Park. Oh, yes. Denali National Park is in Alaska. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do you all it's also get been it? referred to as Mount McKinley National Park. Mountain Kenyan National Park. Mountain Kenyan, yes, So this question popped in my head with, do you all get into the political dialogue of what this current administration is saying they want to do with the national parks? Um, I would say that that would not be an area that I can that I can comment on. Yeah, I had trouble even asking the question because it is political <laughs> where we are. But also in the mission of being good stewards of the playground, it's like, what can we do as a nation to be good stewards? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. We have a couple minutes left. So let me ask this question so we don't run out of time is what would you like to, what message would you like to leave people with? What message would I like to leave people with? I would like to leave um, people with uh, the message that REI sells incredible gear. Um, we have incredible staff that work with us, um, but we're more than just that. You know, we are a place to um, connect people to people. Um, we're a place to connect communities. Um, you know, one of the reasons that we love being in the Noma neighborhood is because Noma didn't really have uh, a place to be a community hub um, yet, and so. We are we are that place now. We have a, an incredible store, um, and one of the reasons that we that we built the store the way that we built it also is to give people a place to hang out and to um, connect with one another and rejuvenate themselves from the busy uh, life that they're leading here in D.C. Uh, we have some really incredible events that are happening at the D.C. flagship coming up, and I'd love to tell you about those if if you like. Um, we have a really cool used gear swap happening this Saturday from 10:30 to 1:30, where customers are literally going to have their own stuff um, set up on tables for one another to trade. So I've got a pair of hiking boots I'd like to trade and you have a sleeping pad I'd like, Hey, let's make a trade for each other. Uh, or just, you know, I can, we can buy each other's things from Becky, one another. And Becky, we've got to run. <laughs> I want to trade. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to come by and get some gear so I can trade it. Yes, come on by. <laughs> Thank you very you much, Becky. It. It's been a real pleasure. Everybody out there, please have a cooperative week, and we look forward to talking to you next Thursday and come down to the REI store. Have a great day.